Hey guys, RCD Buds here. Just thought I'd show you real quick how to uh, solder a Dean's connector onto a battery. Say you get a new battery in the mail and it has no connector or it has a connector on it that you don't particularly want to use. Uh, I prefer the Dean's connectors. Make sure if you're going to do a Dean's connector that you use the female Dean's connector. You've got one side where you're going to uh, solder the wires on here and the female. Otherwise, you run the chance, if you have the male, of shorting the wires. And the thing you never want to do for your batteries is to short the black and the red wire. Another thing people do sometimes in an effort to do this in a hurry, they'll cut both of these wires with their clippers. And what they'll do is they'll create a short, and again, creating the short makes the battery go poof. So, make sure you do this one wire at a time when you do this, okay? clip one wire. I'm going to start with the black wire, the ground wire. Clip this guy. Pull off the extra shrink tubing that was on there. Bust out my handy dandy wire cutters. Just use it so you can take a little end off of the wire. So here we go. Got the wire here. One thing that's always great is a rosin flux pen. One thing you never want to forget is the first thing you do, put your shrink tubing on there. Shrink tubing, slide it on. I prefer to be safer and not sorry, so I put two pieces. I've got a, another longer piece of shrink tubing that I put on there. Make sure you push it all the way to the end, because when you heat it up, the heat will transfer down the wire and you might end up melting the shrink tubing. So, thing you want to do, this is going to get hot, so you want to have some sort of tool that you want to use to uh, hold your connectors. Uh, this is a great little tool that I got from a friend. Holds it on there. It's metal. You don't have to worry about uh, burning your fingers. And you'll notice there's the long wire, the uh, side that goes parallel to the longest side. See there's a bit more gap here on one side than there is on the other. So you want to put the wire on this side where there's more gap. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Get some rosin flux on there. Flux is something that helps the uh, solder flow better. Transfers the heat. You want to put some on the end of your wire. And before we connect the two, what we're going to do is called tinning. Uh, you get yourself a good soldering iron. The more wattage you have, the hotter it can get. It doesn't need to be too hot. Uh, I like to wipe it off on the little sponge that I have here. Uh, get the tip tinned so that it will also help flow a little better. You want to tin the tip. Wipe that off a little. Come in here. Tin the tip of this guy. See, I got the solder on the end of that. Same thing here. Tin the tip. And the so proper soldering technique, you want to put the solder, down, solder iron down first and then you put the solder into the iron and then you pull the solder away first and then take the iron off. So iron, solder, then solder off, iron off. Iron on the tip of this guy. I uh, usually blow the smoke out of my face as it comes up. Some people like to have a fan so that it blows it away. You know, whatever works for you. In any case, you don't want to breathe this stuff in. Solder these two together. I want to make sure that it's flowed nice. And you get a good solid connection on there. You can see if if it's nice and smooth then you know you've got a good surface. Give it a little tug, 
wiggle, make sure it's on there tight. Alright, so you slide this, you want to cover the whole thing. I'm going to go over that whole thing, cover it up. You don't want these two to touch, ever. Ever, ever, ever. And then, to get the sh heat shrink, I just use a lighter. Works great. A little around there. And then I get my second piece of heat shrink on there. Better to be safe than sorry. Same thing. Use a lighter. It'll shrink around the wire. Voila. So you got the first one. Make sure that's on there. Nice and tight. So then, now that we know this is on here, we've got the heat shrink on there, keeping it from making any contact or shorts with anything. Then we can move on to the next wire. Do the red. Cut it off. Same thing. I'll we'll peel this back. Use some rosin flux. And don't forget, put on the shrink tubing, shrink wrapping, heat shrink, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. A lot of people, <laughs> I've done this myself, you'll forget, and you'll just solder it on there, and then you'll realize, oh man, I didn't put the heat shrink on there, so hopefully if you do that enough, you uh, learn and remember not to do it. Same thing. Put some flux on the end of the connector. Tin the end of the soldering iron. If you tin the end, it, it just flows better. And like I said, heat first then the solder I'm still heating back up for me same thing with the end of the wire elevator without knocking the camera. Okay. Got that good. Heat them together. I usually get the stuff flowing on the connector first. Turn it over so that if a piece of solder ends up falling, it doesn't cause a short between these two. Get some extra solder over here on this side. A good solid joint on both sides. Mechanical and electrical connection. There we go. Cools off really quick. Check your joint. Smooth on that side. Smooth on that side. Smooth on both sides. Pull on it. It's all good. Now we can take it out of the, the jig. Then pull your heat shrink on there. Got a pretty big joint here. This is also why I put some backup heat shrink on there. Slide that over top of the joint. Same thing. Use lighter. Heat it up. 
if you have a heat gun or something, you can do that too. That works perfect, but I don't have a heat gun. I'll slide that up there as much as you can. Two pieces of heat shrink. Way to do it. Good solid connection on both of those. As you can see. Something else I also like to do uh, once I'm done. Get some electrical tape. I like to put it in between the two. Takes a minute to pull it through. I like to get it up there and use it as a third line of defense to keep these from shorting. I wrap it around the red one a couple times. And then I go around the whole connector. So it keeps them isolated. And serves a purpose to mechanically I gotta find my scissors to cut this thing. Wrap that on there. When you use the battery, when you have to pull on it, it kind of gives you a little bit more mechanical strength on the whole connector. You pull on this part, and you're not like pulling on one wire or pulling on the other wire. You can grab the whole connector and just pull it off. So, I use two pieces of shrink tube and then wrap it all with electrical wire. And it, it always holds together great. Great mechanical, great electrical connection. So, when you're done soldering this thing, what you want to do with your soldering iron, it's always smart to tin the end of it. I shut it off. Shut it off right now. And then tin the end of it. You want some solder to remain on the end of your tip. It keeps your tip healthier much longer. So keep that on your tip and let it dry like that.